thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hadi Shagirdi Esmaili. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Princeton University. Uh, today, I would like to talk about my presentation entitled Tough by Inspired Architected Cement Based Materials. Before that, let me thank our team members, uh, Shashank, Arjun, and Reza from Moini Lab for their collaboration and intellectual contribution to this project. The focus of our research studies lies at the interface between robot manufacturing, material design, and mechanics. Uh, so let me give you a, a background. Uh, layer by layer additive manufacturing, known as 3D printing of cement based materials, is currently receiving uh, much attention because of the viability of its use in the construction industry. The simplest and most widely used form of 3D printing is uh, extrusion based printing, a layer wise concrete extrusion process that allows the manufacturing of cylindering structures uh, across multiple length scales. And it provides uh, freedom of design and autonomous fabrication uh, for civil, civil infrastructure. As an example, uh, you can see the, for example, the world's uh, longest 3D printed pedestrian bridge uh, located in Shanghai and certified by Guinness Book of Records. However, the first and foremost uh, important issue is the strong anisotropic behavior due to the layered structure. And specifically speaking, to do the, uh, due to the uh, interface formation between the layers. Uh, for example, the blue region shown in the figure D, which is weaker than uh, filament. So this is unlike test samples. Uh, this anisotropy and interface formation affect the uh, mechanical and fracture properties of the samples. So the broad question here is that whether this anomaly is considered as a challenge or opportunity. Uh, Bioinspired design gives the opportunity uh, to develop prototypes to evaluate and shift the processing structure properties paradigm in these materials. So one question here is that how we can manufacture materials with better performances? Answer would be that we can learn from nature and world of biometrics as how to design the architected materials with unprecedented properties using the very same material which is called bio-inspired design in architectural materials. For example, as you saw, uh, the video showed how fast and strong the mantis shrimp uh, uh, biological system can punch off the crab's claw, another uh, biological system, which is the primary source of inspiration for bio-inspired design study. Using it manufacturing as a processing pr platform, we can achieve new material architectures that exhibit new properties that have never been observed before. For example, the figure on the right shows toughness as a function of elastic modulus, highlighting that naturally existing biological uh, materials in brown curve retain toughness with an increase in stiffness. Uh, on the other hand, the current synthetic engineering materials uh, as shown in green show an inverted curve in indicating that the toughness drops dramatically as stiffness increases. So even though uh, natural materials exhibit modest uh, properties compared to their engineering, engineering counterparts, uh, they tend to achieve a better trade-off. This significant difference primarily stems from the structure of the biological materials and also their associated uh, toughening mechanism. Uh, it should be noted that this idea of architectural materials can lead to ge uh, generational properties, which is not, not solely offered by the single material or the ar architecture itself. This idea has shown promising results in uh, cement paste and mortar material fabrication with regard to their flow and impact resistance enhancement. Uh, well, we all know that uh, monolithic ceramics uh, with inherent brittle behavior uh, show a low displacement uh, behavior without any post-peak softening and any associated energy dissipation before ultimate failure. On the other hand, the biological systems such as nature and its uh, brick and mortar architecture, which is mainly composed of carbonate material, also another brick and material, uh, show counterintuitive post-peak behavior through their clever architecture and also interaction between their constituent materials. Figuring the right indicates the efficiency of the toughening mechanisms discovered in natural biological composites such as bone and nature. 
So here, our intention is to learn uh, different design strategies from these composites and apply them to synthetic cement-based composites. The problem for now is that can we leverage from the weak interfaces induced by IoT manufacturing in the design process? Can we harness the interplay between the weak interface and their spatial arrangement uh, architecture? So in this study, for uh, patterning the material, we use the SCARA printer uh, known as uh, 3D Potter V4 as a processing platform, which allows to control the position of the print head uh, using two articulated uh, single joint arms. This printer is generally used for manufacturing clay and concrete material. So at the initial stage, we calibrate the processing parameters and uh, designing the tool path using the clay. Next, we developed our in-house print mixture consists of sand, cement, water, and other chemical admixtures to extrude filament assemblies with controlled interfacial properties. The mixture was also additionally tailored for early edge deformation and buildability of the extruded material. So in this study, uh, a nozzle diameter and filament layer height of eight millimeter were chosen. The final product is what you see on the right-hand side, uh, a prismatic beams with controlled architectures of sizes 300 by 60 by 56 millimeter. So now let's talk about our designs here. I want to focus only on two designs. The first is CAS and two unidirectional uh, lamellar architectures, which were used to characterize the constituent components. So please note that uh, we will name them uh, filament and interface samples. This enables us to understand how the controlled uh, spatial arrangement of the filament and interface assemblies can contribute finally to the performance of architected materials. Next, we propose the bi-inspired polygon architecture, which is present in the ductile club of Mattis Schirm. So the ductile club possesses an outstanding resistance to brittle failure, which can be attributed to the helicoidal architecture of the layers rotating at a fixed pitch angle of gamma with respect to their lower layer. So in this study, we examine solid polygon architecture, 100% infill at three pitch angles of five, 10, and 20, as well as cellular polygon architecture with infill 80%. At a, bulliga, at a pitch angle of 10 degrees. So the first uh, analysis step for us is to qualitatively scan the internal architecture of lamellar samples across two length scales. At the larger length scale, we perform a micro CT analysis at a resolution of 50 microns and region of interest size of 44 by 25 by 36 millimeter along X, Y, and Z axis. So across X, Z plane, the resulting micrographs shows regions that contain large pores uh, located in between adjacent filaments. They are typically wider than four millimeter, which is about half of the filament diameter size. We take one step further and dive into high resolution using SCM microscopy to characterize the interface composition between adjacent filaments. Combining the SCM and EDS analysis highlights that there are empty regions between filaments at the, at the originally, which later will were filled by SCM paste. This piece of uh, evidence highlights the formation of weak and porous interfacial regions in 3D printed mortar samples, which later contributes to the enhancement of fracture characteristics of the samples. So uh, for quantitative analysis, first we perform a three-point bending flexural test on unnotched samples with length of 300 millimeter, width of 60, and height of 56, which tra translates into seven stacked layers. This allows us to measure the modulus and strengths of the samples. For the design of polygon samples, uh, the orientation of the first filament is equal to the filament orientation in the interface lamellar architecture. So this implies that we need to set the interface sample as our reference case. 
The low displacement curves here illustrates an increase in compliance of interface and polygon architectures, both solid and cellular, when we compare them to their filament and cast counterparts. Second interesting finding is that the interface is two times weaker than the filament. This means that in a polygon architecture, the strong structural component of the sample, the filament, is two times stronger than the weak structural component, the interface. And, uh, sorry. and the third finding is that the statistic, statistical analysis between the polygon samples and filament samples indicate that their strength values are significantly indifferent. In other words, we didn't observe any sacrifice of the strength in the design of polygon architecture. Next, we did a fracture analysis of uh, notched mortar beams under three-point bending flexural testing. By using ASTM E1820, we utilized the concept of J-integral versus crack extension to calculate KIC and KJC, which represents the elastic and plastic components of J-integral. To be more clear, the KIC represents the fracture resistance of the material prior to the peak of the curve, uh, for example, force CMOD, and KJC will be greater than KIC if the sample exhibits any plastic behavior. After analysis of the results, we observed that cast filament and interface samples does not exhibit post-peak behavior and any associated plastic J-integral uh, component, and their, their KIC is equal to KJC. The KIC of the filament and cast are approximately equal to each other as opposed to the KIC of the interface, which is about three times lower. Well, uh, the weak interface now shows a fracture resistance three times lower than that for its filament counterpart. This evidence become more obvious in the fracture analysis of polygon architecture, where the major J integral plastic component significantly contributes to the increase of fracture toughness. For example, KJC of polygon architecture increases as the pitch angle goes from five to 10 degree, and then decreases as we go from 10 degree to 20 degree, which I will show the results in details in the next slide. Here, the uh, left figure shows the fracture toughness versus strength to highlight the trade-off between these two components with regard to our design parameters. And right figure shows the fracture toughness versus Young's modulus to highlight the effect of design parameters on the compliance of the samples. Our results indicate an unprecedented one-fold increase of toughness in solid polygon with 10 degree pitch angle as compared to their interface counterparts and 100% increase as compared to their printed and unidirectional filament and cast counterpart. The cellular polygon, on the other hand, uh, with 10 degree pitch angle shows six times increase of toughness as compared to, this, uh, to its interface counterpart, and also 10 times increase in the compliance, which is, uh, that's what we observed in our, in our uh, analysis. We want to better understand the toughening mechanisms responsible for this unprecedented result. So to this end, we characterize the interface crack, uh, characterize the interface crack interaction in the damaged region of the notched polygon samples with 10 degree pitch angle. These are rendered micrographs on the XY plane moving upward along the Z axis. For example, I'm showing snapshots from cross section of layer number two and layer number five, where you obviously observe the crack growth is being manipulated by interface. Generally, uh, it's shown that the damage mechanisms are promoted, uh, promoted by this fine spark design is generated due to interfacial cracking and crack twisting. We conclude that the Bulligan design allows for controlled fracture and crack growth at interface and enhanced energy dissipation and toughness. And uh, finally, we can infer that fine spark Bulligan architectures in conjunction with weak interfaces, promotes the interfacial damage and allows for enhancing the fracture response. So uh, we studied the effect of bionic part architecture, the Bulligan, uh, for controlling the spatial arrangement of weak interfaces on overall properties of cement-based materials. 
which for the first time leads to promotion of unique damage mechanisms such as interfacial cracking and crack twisting, an increase of fracture toughness by 10 times, an increase of compliance by 10 times. So uh, we say that the patter patterning of the material is free of cost. Drawing patterns from nature could inform new design approaches for tougher and resilient construction materials and structures. Our current goal is to scale up this study by using seven axis uh, robot arm platform, which are equipped with real time proportioning of raw material and in situ monitoring of processing param parameters, such as flow, pressure, and temperature. Several material compositions are in development for intricate architectures, and there is design uh, uh, freedom of meter scale samples with control architecture. And our team has focused on the scaling of the understanding between the interface and architecture synergy. Here's uh, showcasing our capacity in manufacturing of cement-based materials across three length scales. This is cement-based extrusion platform using FDM-based Ultimaker. This is cement mortar extrusion platform using SCARA that we discussed in this study. And there, and there are, uh, and Sorry for the noise. And uh, there are uh, large scale concrete printing platforms using two different extrusion techniques. One is mono material extrusion using IRB4600, and the other is dual material extrusion using IRB6700. Finally, uh, I would like to acknowledge the support we received from NSF ECI uh, program and also the generous uh, support of Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Princeton University. So I would like to thank you everyone for the attention. Uh, so for any further information, please feel free to contact me through my email address uh, listed above. Now I'm open for your questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Reza? Any questions from the audience? Yes. You use the microphone, please. Hi. Um, really quick question. So can you give a little bit more detail on how the, the system you have on the robotic arm can control the proportioning of your raw ingredients? Uh, sure. So uh, we have a, a, a controller, PLC controller, which uh, gives us the uh, ability to provide the interaction between the human and robot. So it's kind of like a software hardware integration where we can uh, like uh, instantaneously uh, check the, uh, the raw material input and then uh, manipulate the, the, like the water bind binder ratio. And also we have the capacity to perform uh, mixing at the nozzle where we can uh, uh, include the addition of the wet material to the dry material right at the tip of the nozzle of the robot. Thank you. 